Now today I'll be showing on how you can test and replace an EGR valve on a model Acura, Honda, and this will also apply to really most vehicles. So the first thing we need to do is locate the EGR valve and on this Acura TL it is right here. So let's first remove this plastic cover. This just pops up, rubber grommets in the rear, and that's it. Now you can certainly test this valve while it's still attached to the engine. I'm going to remove it because it's just easier for me to film and show you what I'm doing. So right here at the 12 o'clock position, press on the tab, pull on the body, and then we have a fastener in the front and also in the rear. Just using a little penetrating oil, now this is a 12 millimeter fastener. Now these are really tight. This has not been removed in 16 years. So there is an easier way to remove this without killing your wrist. So what I have is a 14 millimeter half inch drive socket with an extension. This allows me to have a much longer handle. And there we go, to break this loose. And this is the fastener at the rear, make sure you're firmly on it, and there we go. And then this simply comes right off of the vehicle. That's it. Now if you do have a trouble code for the EGR valve, or you suspect it isn't working, the best thing to do first is clean out the port. In other words, this can really gunk up with carbon. And if it gunks up, the valve won't work correctly. So just some carb cleaner, spray it all out, clean it out. This one looks okay, but nonetheless, clean this out, reinstall it, and that may just be the problem. Also make sure there's no carbon buildup where the EGR valve bolts onto the engine. So you cleaned out the port, you reinstall it on the vehicle, you take the vehicle for a test drive, and you still have trouble. What's the next step? Let's test the valve. In other words, there's a plunger here that is supposed to move back and forth if this is working correctly. Let's energize this and see if the valve is working. So what we'll need is a digital multimeter. If you do not have one of these, they are inexpensive. This is $25. As always, I'll have a link to all of the tools in the description box below. And when you purchase the meter, you simply plug in the leads. So you have a red lead and a black lead. In this case, we want to see where the power is, so we need the volts. Make sure you're on the DC setting. Now your black lead is engine ground. That is any good metal point on the body. Right here is a metal bracket. So just taking this lead, Clamping it to the metal bracket, that's it. Inside the vehicle, just turn the ignition on. Do not start the car, just turn on the ignition. And then I have a little test probe. These are terrific because you don't have to use a paper clip and jam it into the harness connector. Again, I'll have a link for these in the description box. And then just clamping the red lead that runs to the meter. Now what you're looking for is a 5 volt reading. So this is the harness connector, of course, that plugs into the EGR valve. We need to find the power source. So just taking the test lead and touching every terminal until I see a 5 volt reading on the meter. This is a millivolt reading. Don't pay attention to that. Way too low millivolt reading, just testing every terminal here, millivolt reading, and here we go, 5.88 volts, this is our power. Now if you're doing this on your vehicle and you test every single lead, first make sure you have a good ground. If you don't have a good ground, you won't have a reading here. Secondly, if you triple checked everything and you're not getting a reading, then you have a wiring issue, and you'll have to track that down with a power probe 
or some other device. But chances are you should not have an issue here. But now we need to find ground. So on the multimeter, if you look closely, there's an option for continuity. It looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot symbol. It simply means two points make a connection. Once again, my black lead is still on body ground. And now we want to hear that audible alert. So we know the bottom right is power. So we can ignore this one. So let's see if we can find ground. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. There it is. Now, also I should mention the ignition key is off. You don't have to have the ignition key turned on for this test. You should have ground. So we know where our power is and we know where the ground is. Now before we test this, again, line everything up. Just double check, you know, precisely what's going on. So, once I line up that harness connector to the valve, I know that the bottom left is our power, bottom right is our ground. Let's energize it. Now to test and energize this, I have an RC LiPo battery pack. This pushes out pretty close to 12 volts. You can also use your car battery. I don't recommend that. You want something away from the vehicle so you don't have a fire hazard. There is something else you can try. The other option is a cordless battery pack. Just make sure it's 12 volts. You don't want 20 volts. You don't want a chance burning this out. But if you look closely, right here you have a positive. Right here is your negative. So you're just setting up the leads, positive and negative, directly to this. So here we go. In this case, positive is red. And we know it's the bottom left. Okay, is our power. And then we take the other lead. Super simple. And this should energize if it's working. So that's the bottom. Let me do this so you guys can see if this is working. Now watch the bottom. You see that? So this is a working EGR valve. There's one more thing we can do. So now we've cleaned out the carbon. We verified that this valve is working correctly and we know that this is getting power from the vehicle's computer or power source. But we also need to check the resistance, a resistance reading. Again, multimeter, you want the ohms setting. That's the omega symbol on the meter. And a good reading is between, at least I should say, at least one kilo ohm. So just taking the first lead, let's touch the top left terminal, grab the next lead, and watch the meter. And we have 1.3, 1.4 kilo ohms. That is a good reading. Move on to the next one. And now we have four kilo ohms. I know it's kilo because the multimeter is telling us right there with the K symbol. This is a 100% working EGR valve. In my case, I don't have a trouble code. I'm just doing this as a how-to. Typically, again, carbon buildup and do that valve test. If this is moving correctly, chances are the valve is in good shape, but you also want to check the resistance. And that's all it takes to simply test and replace an EGR valve. As always, I hope this helps a number of you out there, and thank you for watching.